I guess you're here to see the wizard. Janda's eyes snapped up and found Bowen smirking at him with the faintest expression of amused innocence. Most people aren't too fond of magic, he said cautiously. True, but most people haven't just had their asses served by it, literally or otherwise. This young man was completely outside of anything in Janda's experience. Until a year previously, Janda's entire life had been lived inside the boundaries of a small fishing village by the edge of the Rage Sea. His people were simple, hard-working peasants who cherished their independence and self-fortitude above all else. It had been his rare talent for the strange power known as magic that had induced him to leave, that and his people's mistrust of him for it. But even so, he found himself missing his home terribly at times. The world was far larger and stranger than he had ever believed possible, and he was beginning to learn that it took all kinds of people to populate a globe. Here in the capital, the people were apparently stranger than most. Janda sighed. I've heard stories about Master Teresh wherever I've travelled. They say he's one of the best mage-born sorcerers in the world. The best? Bowen corrected him. He's personal advisor to the king. I'll tell you one thing, Terenyin. When you set your sights on something, you have no qualms about aiming high. I'm hoping he'll take me on as an apprentice and train me in the ways of magic. Janda's voice had gone soft, and his gaze slid to Gabrielle again, smiling faintly as he met her focused gaze. It was much easier to meet her eyes than to face Bowen's too intense stare. Isn't that right, beauty? he murmured. She gave a low chirrup in acknowledgement and flicked her long tongue out to stroke her nose. Most kitlings don't form these kinds of attachments, Bowen said, startling Janda with a change of subject. She's really beautiful. Thanks. I've had her since she left the egg. He extended his index finger and rubbed it lightly against the side of her head. She leaned into his touch with a low croon of pleasure, eyes going to half-mast. We've been together for about four years now. They say that people who have an affinity with kitlings will have an affinity with dragons. You know, since they all came from the same ancestors once upon a time. Bowen's voice was thoughtful. Janda laughed, the suddenness of the sound startling Gabrielle into drawing away from him sharply. He dropped his hand back down to his lap. No, I don't think so. I'll leave the dragons to the treasure seekers and the historians. They don't have much to do with this anymore anyway. Bowen was silent a moment. I've heard that there's one hoarded up in the mountains north of the city. One of the ancient ones. He reached out one hand toward Gabrielle, but she drew her head back with a low hiss and narrowed her eyes at him disdainfully. He pulled his hand back quickly. Janda shook his head. Not our business, Bowen. But haven't you ever dreamed of stumbling across a dragon's treasure? Gold, silver, jewels, riches beyond imagining. Magic. Those are children's stories. No one really knows much about dragons. I think they have better things to do with their time than collect useless pieces of treasure. Useless. Bowen appeared highly mortified at this pronouncement. He made an indulgent kind of tusk-tusk sound and gazed at Janda pityingly from under his dark lashes. Have you no ambition at all? Janda ignored the teasing tone and answered truthfully. Yes, I want to become a mage. 